Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a really nice problem with geometric sequences. We have x, y, x plus y, x over y, and x minus y. And we're going to find the next term in this geometric sequence. So this problem comes from US Descartes on Twitter. You can go ahead and check out his page. That's his Twitter handle, full of beautiful problems and ideas. So. These are the terms of a geometric progression. We're supposed to find the next term, which is g sub 4. And this problem is being done in collaboration with Dr. PK. Make sure to check out his YouTube channel. It's full of nice Olympiad level problems. Beautiful, beautiful problems. So I guess we're done with the video, right? That's it. April Fools. Let's go ahead and take a look at the solution. So now, we have the following terms, x, y, x plus y, x over y, and x minus y. And then we're supposed to find the next one, right? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a term in the middle, this one, and use the property of geometric sequences. We're going to square the middle term, and that's going to equal the product of the two terms that are the same distance from the center, because x plus y, in this case, happens to be the center, so it's equal to the product of the two terms on either side. Okay, so far so good. Let's go ahead and expand this a little bit. We're going to get x squared plus y squared plus 2xy. The y cancels out and we end up with x squared. And then x squared cancels out and we end up with y squared plus 2xy is equal to 0. So that's one equation. Let's go ahead and factor out a y and leave it as is. This is going to be one of our equations. We're going to get back to this, okay? But we can write more conditions, obviously, right? And the another condition is going to be coming from taking this as the middle term. So if you square x over y, that's going to equal to the product of these two terms because they are the same distance from the center. And that's going to be x plus y times x minus y, which is x squared minus y squared from difference of two squares, right? So here's what we get. x squared over y squared equals x squared minus y squared. Awesome. That's another equation, right? So we kind of need to consider this as a system and solve it. How do we solve this system? First of all, we can go ahead and do the following. From y times y plus 2x equals 0, we get two solutions, right? One of them is y equals 0, but that's a no-no because you can't divide by 0. It's definitely wrong. It's not like 0 to the power 0, which is 1. You can't divide by 0. No way. So that's done. And what about the second piece? We get y equals negative 2x from here. Awesome. That's something we can use here, right? Let's go ahead and substitute that and see what happens. Replace y with negative 2x, you're going to get x squared over 4x squared equals x squared minus 4x squared. This is going to be 1 fourth, and we're going to get negative 3x squared equals 1 fourth, which means x squared equals negative, if you divide both sides by negative 3, negative 1 over 12. From here we get two values, x is either, wait a minute, x is not real, right? Because its square is negative. Yay, it's not real. It's complex. So one of the values is going to be 1 over 2 root 3 i. The other one is going to be negative 1 over 2 root 3 i. Basically, these are going to be the square roots of negative 1 over 12 in the complex world. And y is equal to negative 2x. In other words, we're just going to multiply each of these by negative 2 to get the y value. So in other words, we get two ordered pairs from here. 1 over 2 root 3i, comma, negative 1 over root 3i. And negative 1 over 2 root 3i with positive 1 over root 3i. Those are going to be two of the solutions, right? Now, remember, our goal is to find g sub 4, right? How do we find g sub 4? To find g sub 4, we're going to consider the following. Remember the terms of the sequence again one more time? x, y, x plus y, x over y, 
and x minus y and this is the last term which is d sub 4. So we can safely say that if you consider this to be the middle term then the product of these two terms is going to be this term squared. Make sense? The same rule over and over. But we do know that the third term is x over y multiplied by g sub 4 is equal to x minus y squared because that's in the middle and then from here g sub 4 can be written as x minus y squared multiplied by y divided by x. So that's the answer pretty much but let's go ahead and just plug in the values and see what happens. What is x? Uh, let's just pick one of the values. What about 1 over root 3, 2 root 3i and in that case we have a positive, I mean negative y which gives us 1 over root 3i and we're supposed to square that and then multiply that by y again and divide the whole thing by x. Make sense? So this should be the answer, one of the answers for g sub 4. Let's go ahead and simplify it and see what happens. When you add these two things, it's going to give you 3 over 2 root 3i, right? And then you're supposed to square it and multiply by this and then divide by that. I could probably simplify a couple things here such as these two i's will cancel out the root threes are going to cancel out and this two we can go ahead and put it in the numerator as a multiplier so g sub 4 is going to be two times 9 i squared is just going to give us negative 2 negative 1 divided by 12 and then we have a negative 1 here and then that should be it right if you go ahead and simplify this a little bit like negative times negative is positive 9 and 12 have a common factor. Actually, this is 18 over 12, and that would be 3 over 2. That would be, obviously, one of the solutions, right? Okay, great. And then from here, obviously, you can find the other values by using the other variables, uh, the, val the other values, such as 1 over, uh, negative 1 over root 3i. Remember that? And then this time, you're going to subtract uh, 1 over root 3i, you're going to square this. This is going to give you, again, something similar. But this time, you're going to be multiplying by a positive quantity. So you're going to get a positive answer from that. It's pretty much going to be the same thing. But then, when you divide by a negative one more time, because this time, x is negative, right? And that'll give you the same answer as far as I know. So in either case, you're going to get the same answer. Obviously, you could also approach this problem a little differently. You could also do consider the following, g sub 0, g sub 1, g sub 2, g sub 3, and g sub 4. You can kind of say something like, okay, g sub 0 times r is going to be g sub 1, right? Because that's the common ratio. And then if you take g sub 0 and multiply by r squared, that's going to give you g sub 2. And if you take g sub 0 and multiply by r cubed, that's going to give you g sub 3. And then finally, you're going to get g sub 4. Make sense? Okay. When you multiply by r to the fourth power. So by using all of these equations, obviously, you could get the values of r. First, I think you get something in terms of x. And then you get an equation, find the value of r, and just go from there. End. This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.